ahead and call this meeting of the Capitola City Council to order. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Botsworth. Here. Council Member Bertrand. Present. Council Member Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. Mayor Peterson. Here. Uh, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. There were two items regarding, or excuse me, two emails regarding item 8C in, in favor you. of staff recommendation. consensus from the council a thumbs up if we're okay with moving that item all right great so we're gonna uh, move item 8a or excuse me pull item 8a from tonight's uh, meeting uh, now is the time for public comment so if there's any member of the public that would like to address the council on items not on tonight's agenda now would be the time now we'll turn it over to larry as our moderator to let us know if there's any public comment received. I do not see any attendees with hands up, and I do not see any emails. All right. With that, we will close public comment uh, and move on to city council and staff comments. Let's start with staff, if staff has any comments. Yeah, I do have one comment I would like to make. It's actually an announcement I'd like to make. Um, about six months ago, our records coordinator was put in a position of having to step into the city clerk position. Um, it was obviously the beginning of the pandemic. Our prior city clerk had just retired, and Chloe Woodensby was willing to step up and serve as the interim clerk. Uh, she's done so admirably and effectively over the last six months, and I'm very proud to announce that uh, as of today, we're removing the interim from her title, and Chloe is going to be our new city clerk. So, take me in a moment and congratulate Chloe. Thank you her for her time. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you, and I'm happy to be here helping everyone, like always. So, if I, anything I can do better, please let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Chloe. We're so lucky to have you. You've been fantastic in the last six months as, as interim clerk, and we're, I'm really excited to have you on board uh, as our, our permanent city clerk. Thank you so much, yeah, Mayor. I'm the holder of the official city seal. <laughs> yes, that is, that is the truth. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Chloe. You're doing a great job. I work with a lot of clerks, and you continue to work with me. It's a great job. Everyone's being so nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's overwhelming. <laughs> All right. Um, so, it, it's our, uh, any additional staff comments? That's all we have for this evening. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will move on to uh, council member comments then. It looks like Vice Mayor Brooks has her hands up. Uh, I just want to say congratulations, Chloe. I'm so happy to be working with you. I also wanted to add that um, if you did not notice that it, the website is Thank you. Um, also, you're welcome. I also just wanted to mention that in the United States, black people have lived through a long history of racial injustice and senseless institutionalized violence. This isn't their battle to fight alone. I encourage Capitola residents to continue to learn about the Black Lives Matter movement, stay informed, become an ally, and attend the upcoming community member forum. I will be taking place 
place in December. So thank you very much and congratulations again to, to Chloe. Thank you, Vice Mayor Brooks. I see Councilmember Member Bosworth. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to echo the sentiments of I believe everybody on the City Council. Uh, so, Chloe, congratulations. You've done a great job in your, in your old position and your temporary position and with the website. And I think you've joined the ranks of uh, a couple of people that uh, have served two jobs at one time in this city. And just, uh, we're, we're very glad that the city manager made this decision and uh, happy for that. And the other comment I wanted to make was that I just, you know, there's, there's the times are getting really challenging. Uh, there was a, I heard it in the news today, there was a, an incident to try to kidnap the mayor of, of uh, Michigan. Uh, these are scary times that, that none of us can imagine what's around the next corner. Uh, it puts the people that protect us on, on high alert. So I just want to, again, commend our, our the Capitol Police Department for being on guard for, for literally who knows what. And, uh, uh, I just want to thank them for showing up to work every day and doing a great job they do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bosworth. Councilmember Bertrand? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I think it's a testament to Chloe that at this time, uh, which usually for a city clerk is one of the hardest times of their four years between election or two years between elections, uh, having to learn all the codes and the regulations that make sure um, the mechanism of government goes forward, especially at a, a time of election. So it's a pleasure to go into her office, and um, so I'm so happy she's here. Um, my other comment is, um, in terms of it's a hard time, you know, I'd just like to reflect on the community that we live in. So as you know, Capitola lived through a flood, and at that time, a lot of neighbors in town and around in the vicinity came out to help the flood victims, whether they were businesses or people that lived in Paco or any other places that, that had houses in that vicinity. And it was something we all truly remember. It was, it was a wonderful testament to what this community is like, Santa Cruz in general and Paco. So I'd like to also say that we had the uh, CBU fire and um, I've noticed the same thing. A lot of people that I know have either been directly affected or indirectly affected, and the neighbors and friends that turned out to help them, whether it was a grocery fund or offering to have people stay in their home or take care of pets, or in some cases providing mobile homes so that people could live down at the, um, was it uh, Watsonville Center? You know, because they had tons of pets. I know some that gave some of the trucks so they could carry hay back and forth, you know, to feed the horses. So, you know, I think we truly live in an amazing area. And, you know, it's this outpouring of goodwill and willingness to help people in the, the time of need, I think is representative of the community we live in. So thank you for living in Santa Cruz, and thank you for all people in Santa Cruz who help their neighbors. Thank you, Council Mayor Bertrand. Um, I would just like to quickly make a couple comments that's already been said both from uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, Council Member Bosworth, and Council Member Bertram uh, to, to acknowledge the um, you know, structural discrimination and racism that have been faced by people of color, indigenous people, um, Latinx people throughout history. Also to acknowledge the good work of our uh, Capitola Police Department and to acknowledge the, um, the kindness of people within the community when we need to uh, step up and support one another. Um, I have spent the last few days uh, participating in the League of California Cities virtual annual conference uh, and that will com uh, come to completion tomorrow. It's been really interesting to see uh, how this is playing out virtually as opposed to uh, being there in person with a bunch of people in Sacramento, which is how it usually would be done, um, or I guess this year it was in Long Beach. Um, but it's, uh, I, I really want to commend the League of Cities. They have done a fantastic job of providing um, really engaging content and information. Uh, today, uh, we did have uh, one of the series was on uh, racial justice and equity and how cities can be involved in that. And it gave a history lesson on uh, redlining and how communities uh, were, um, you know, certain communities uh, weren't able to get uh, home loans because they were considered to be financially risky because they had a large population of people of color and how that prevented people from building wealth. So I, I really learned 
learned a lot um, today and, and throughout um, my time on city council. And so that was just one of the um, the seminars that I was a part of today. I also took a seminar on um, uh, how women in local government can join corporate boards, like how you can do a pathway to join corporate boards. Uh, I did another one on municipal revenues and what we can expect in the coming years. I did another one uh, today on housing law, and then tomorrow uh, will be one on labor negotiations and then our general uh, assembly to wrap it all up. So it's, it's been really interesting. I just wanted to share that all with you. Um, for, for anyone who hasn't been involved in any of the league activities, either uh, at the division level or with the policy committees or the conferences, I would highly encourage it. I always learn so much um, and it's really exciting. So with that, I will go ahead and uh, close council comments, uh, staff and council comments, and we will move on to our consent agenda. So all of the items on our consent calendar will be enacted in one motion in the form listed on the agenda. And there's no separate discussion unless a member of the public or of the council wants to pull an item for a uh, separate discussion. So I will go first to um, to Larry, our moderator, to let me know if we've received any comments from the public asking to pull an item. I do not see any hands raised by attendees, and I do not see any emails on the side. Okay, great. We will come back to council. Does any member, uh, Councilor Berton, if you have your hand up? Yeah, um, I just wanted to talk about the 7C. And I had a question last time because we increased funding. Were we going to reach out to um, those who weren't able to participate because the scholarship fund wasn't big enough? Is there any update on that? Councilmember Bator. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. It carries unanimously. Uh, now we'll go back to uh, item 7C that was pulled from the consent calendar. Uh, Councilmember Breton has asked for uh, an update on whether we have contacted the families who um, pulled out of the out-of-school time program because they, uh, the scholarship wasn't enough for them. Is that uh, correct, Councilmember Bertrand? Okay. Does staff have any update on that? So I was, uh, with Nikki Bryant on the call this evening, I can't remember if she said she had a conflict this evening. I believe she did say she had a conflict this evening and couldn't join. I think, I think I don't know. Know. she's here. Um, so, yes, in registration, we did reach out to um, individuals that have been enrolled, and um, I am not sure if any of them decided to move forward with enrollment. Um, we have increased our enrollment significantly, um, with, and I'll, I'll have an additional detail update for Friday update. Well, I'd just like to comment that I'm, I'm glad you followed through on that, and I'm very happy with this program and how it's moving forward. So, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so, we need to vote on that item separately, correct? Yes. Motion to approve item two. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can I roll call vote, please? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. Yes. Councilmember Bator. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Carried unanimously. Thank you. We're going to move on to general government. Uh, item 8A was pulled for a future meeting, so we're going to go to 
Disney talk. Um, he's still muted, but we're going to go to Sam for comments, and then we'll come back to you. Oh, thank you, Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, Larry, I just had a question about uh, where it refers to the capital rate um, on page, to the top of page 90. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the first, the figure on the far uh, left hand side, the 3752, is that how much of a, the, it will increase? No, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't notice it until it went out that the, the, the table got a little uh, skewed. Um, 3752, I believe, is the current rate we are being charged per ton for um, um, waste taken um, to uh, the Monterey Regional Facility. Uh -huh. um, if I'm incorrect, uh, uh, Mr. Flanagan can correct that, but I believe that, that, that's what that is. Okay, and therefore then, um, on the next column, the, the actual uh, rate would just be going up by about $2.48 per ton? Yes, for this fiscal year, and then it would increase gradually each July 1st moving forward and then to then at five year time it would get to the, the same rate as the member mem member agencies. Right, okay. Got it, thanks. Thank you. All right, Councilman over time. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have two questions. Um, one question is I received a letter from the resident of Capitola uh, inquiring about being able to recycle organic. And um, I sent this so they have an organic closet for every resident, and that's part of recycling, normal recycling. We only do it at the estimate. So I'm wondering if the form of the uh, future negotiations you could expand to the city, how reasonable that is. That's the first question. The second question is a recent law that was signed by the uh, governor of California is mandating um, increased recycling of glass, I believe. And I don't know exactly when that's going to be implemented in terms of full implementation, but it's going to greatly increase the cost, um, excuse me, the reimbursement to the haulers because they're going to have to recycle that glass and they'll get money for it. So that's going to be part of our future negotiations. Um, um, I will uh, allow, as far as the first question, um, as far as residential um, composting, I know there are, there are some laws out there that kind of map up a pathway for residential organics. Currently, I think you mentioned the Esplanon, but we are actually, um, we have a commercial organics program for all of the city um, that Green Waste is implementing. Um, but for residential, um, Tim, are you available to talk to that? I, I am. Can the council hear me? Yes. 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 Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council, and to plan in the GM for the Waste Management District. And and yes, the, to, your, to your question, Council Member, we will be working with our organic processor. We're under the same criteria that your city is. And we'll be running a couple of pilot programs that will uh, probably in the next year or two look to incorporate uh, residential uh, organics or residential food waste in that. So. As we look to develop that, we'll be in contact with staff and let you know what that is. That it's something you will have to work through with Green Lakes Recovery, your hauler. Um, but at the back end, for us as the collector, we are going to be working on a system that would accept that. So to be very clear, you have to work that through with Green Lakes Recovery um, first, and, and we'll be working along that in conjunction with them. And, and just for further edification uh, or clarification, I should say, you will ultimately be charged only 95% of our member agency rate. So you actually will get a 5% discount that our member agencies uh, do not do not receive. So you get a little bit of a discount uh, under this agreement uh, if you go forward and execute it. Oh, thank you, Sal. I didn't realize. My second question was on recycling glass and how now there's a requirement to um, 
incorporate that into manufacturing for our salsa soda? Um, I, I don't know the answer, but I, I, we will be, as far as, far as um, Mr. Flanagan mentioned, we will be, all of these things will be taken um, into our, our new franchise agreement with Greenlight because we do have responsibility for that and um, that will be part of what we bring to you um, when we have that agreement worked out. Thank you, Mike. All right, any additional questions from council? Seeing none, we will bring this to public comment. Larry, do we have anyone who has uh, their hand up or who provided any public comments on this item? I don't see anyone with a hand up. Um, and I do not see any emails on this item. All right, with that, we will bring it back to council for discussion and the vote. And I see. Oh, uh, Councilmember Bosworth has his hand up. Was that for comment, Councilmember? That is to make a motion to approve staff check recommended action. I second. We have a motion and a second. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Councilmember Bator. I think I see him saying aye. Yep, hit N. My screen is on an aye. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Carries unanimously. Thank you. Let me see what uh, item we're moving on to. I have a dog trying to eat my homework. So, <laughs> it's kids trying to eat agenda here. My apologies. Uh, we are moving on to the next item, which is... All right. Here we go. My apologies. We're moving on to item 8C. Establish the personnel on Deputy City Clerk classification. And I will go to staff for a staff report. Mayor, members of council, let me just share my screen here. Um, okay. Now look at all right on everyone's screen. So just a couple weeks ago, uh, we received notice that the executive assistant for city manager plans to retire at Thanksgiving this year. Um, and as you may recall, we already have two vacancies in the city manager's department that includes our city clerk's former position, the records coordinator, as well as our receptionist. So this would bring the three the number of vacancies in a uh, six-person department. Um, so we need, to, we need to take a look at what the responsibilities are and duties and what we're doing right now and how we're going to fill them moving forward. Right now, the executive assistant and city manager serves as the city's deputy clerk. <clears throat> it's actually a very important role because it provides a little bit of backup um, in the event that the clerk is able to do a meeting or put out an agenda packet. We still have to put on the meeting and we still have to put out the agenda packet. So it's very important to have a deputy and city clerk. Um, in addition, the executive and city manager helps with scheduling my calendar, city hall phone, also takes care of all our personnel, in terms of personnel records and record speeds, um, the recruitment and then the liability claims. So when we look at the vacancy, the, the three vacancies that we have in the city manager's department, it really became apparent to me that we could probably reorganize some things at this stage. And so what we're suggesting is, is getting rid of the, um, the executive assistant for city manager and then creating a personnel analyst position and then creating a deputy city clerk position uh, and getting rid of the records coordinator as well. So basically, replacing the, um, the executive city manager with a personnel analyst and then trying to backfill Chloe's old position, the records coordinator, with a position that would be a deputy city clerk. Um, so that's basically the structure. Um, so we're proposing to fill both positions on a part-time basis. The, the, the deputy city clerk position, I think we would, we would inquire about people's availability to work part-time or full-time. 
and then evaluate the candidates and see whether or not we had a good, good candidate to fill the position part time. Initially, we're thinking fill that position part time. The, the advantage of having the deputy city clerk position move over from where it had been to somebody who's directly reporting to the city clerk is I think it's, it's pretty apparent that it would take um, the, the city clerk's number two and have them actually report directly to them. So I think it would make for smoother scheduling, training opportunities, and just provide with a more robust sort of overall, um, overall uh, provision of service that we currently currently have. Um, we're proposing to fill the, uh, the rest of the, the personnel analyst with the same salary as the executive assistant and city manager, and we're proposing a minor bump to the records coordinator um, to bring it up and also give it that deputy city clerk responsibility. Um, and overall, that doesn't really result in any significant real no change in overall cost. So the recommended action would be to improve the creation of the personnel analyst and deputy city clerk job classifications and job descriptions. Uh, we need to amend the city's uh, salary schedule. We also need a approval of side letter and an amendment to the, the uh, MOU with the confidential employees because currently the confidential employees are identified as all being exempt. Uh, and the personnel analyst, we think it, it makes more sense as an hourly position, uh, particularly because, it's, because it would be a 20 hour week job. And then it would be authorized us to recruit for both the personal analyst and um, the deputy city clerk at 20 hours a week. And with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions from council members? Seeing none. Okay, seeing so none, we'll turn it over to public comment. Larry, do we have any members of the public that have uh, comments on this item? I do not see any attendees with hands up, and I do not see any emails on the site. All right, well, with that, we'll close public comment and bring it back to council for discussion and a vote. Uh, if there's any discussion or a motion, go ahead and uh, raise your hand. I see council member Bertrand's hand is up. Oh, you're, you're muted, council member Bertrand. So, sorry, um, I accept the uh, recommendation as proposed by the uh, city manager and move approving it. I'll second it that. All right, we have a motion by council member Bertrand and a second by council member Vosworth. Any additional comments? Seeing none, can we have a roll call please? Roll call vote. Council member Bertrand. Aye. Council member Botsworth. Aye. Council member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. It passes unanimously. And we'll move on to the final item on tonight's agenda, an overview of the zoning code public review in preparation for adoption. Turn it over to staff. Thank you, Mayor Peterson and City Council. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, good evening, and this evening I'm here to uh, um, bring forward the, the zoning code update. We're going to start adoption hearings at the next meeting for our first reading. Whenever we have a document that's like 378 pages long, I feel it's good to get it out in front of you ahead of time. So really that was the basis of placing this on the agenda tonight. I'll give you a brief overview just to uh, check off some boxes that we got things right of what the direction you gave us at the last uh, special meeting that we had and bring up two items that came up at Planning Commission and from there I, I wanted to make an opportunity for adoption some hearings for any questions or items we'd like to bring back for discussion. Um, so very quickly, this is uh, the zoning code update process. Um, last July, um, you were reviewing, um, we've been through the majority of this process with a one public document that went out last year in 2019 and just went to another 90 day or 60 day public draft 
The Planning Commission reviewed for the second time in October 2020 gave a positive recommendation on the draft. Um, one commissioner, uh, Commissioner Welch, had continued to have concerns for the coastal overlay zone and did not um, he was a nay vote on the recommendation to the city council and just still had concerns of possible overreach. Um, the, the planning commission forwarded it on with the majority. And so currently, um, or for adoption, and so the final draft has been published for the adoption hearing, but at this point we are um, moving forward with making sure there's no questions left. So this first topic, Monarch Cove Inn, there have been four different um, modifications since the 2018 adoption. The final direction from City Council is to place the Monarch Cove Inn um, as we added vacation rental as a conditional use to that site. And for single family, we added other conditions that a conditional use um, is required with a single family home and allowed in conjunction with overnight accommodation use or like access to a viewpoint. Next, um, we went over in depth chapter 44, the coastal overlay zone. This we had had um, the Coastal Commission identify exactly where any modifications we were questioning, exactly where it came from the state code. We got feedback from the Coastal Commission and um, removed anything that was, was not tied back to the state law. And um, that has been updated and spent a couple meetings on topic two. Uh, the third topic, Village Park King. The, um, we had some not so easy to follow language about how to convert I mean, and at the last meeting the city council recommendation was to go forth with the um, staff recommendation removed under the last section of the B removed for non-residential use so it would um, be relative for commercial and residential uses for parking standards and zoom out and then last the village hotel height um, the Coastal Commission staff had recommended um, a 10 foot limit and including all the rooftop architectural elements. When we went before Planning Commission, it changed a little bit, and then the final recommendation by the City Council was to take away the 10 foot height, clear up where the views are from, and then include those rooftop architectural elements. So that captures what we heard at that last end. I just wonder if you Two last new things that came up that are questions as we're seeing applications start to come through. Um, and, uh, first is drive throughs and distance measurements. So, in the current standard within the new code, states that drive throughs are prohibited within 100 feet of a residential zoning district or residential use, including residential properties outside the city limits. There's no rule for how you measure the 100 feet, so we want to clean that up. and add one sentence that distance is measured from any site designed and or used for the drive-through service that including the vehicle aisle menu board or uh, an example of this is the current McDonald's I think it's 110 feet from the residential property line behind it if they were bringing a, a drive-through it couldn't stay it couldn't be um, within that 100 foot setback area Next is rooftop deck. For the rooftop deck, currently um, there is no requirement for a design permit for a rooftop deck that's just on, on the rooftop. Um, when, we, when we found out, we would like to add that a design permit is required with planning commission review for any commercial and residential building with a rooftop deck. So that was an error, and we'd like to clean that up. And with that, I, I'm happy to take any council questions. All right, thank you, Katie. Uh, are there any questions from council members? Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I enjoyed reading this. Um, I have to be crazy to do it, but I did enjoy reading this. And I just would like um, 
if you could review the um, item 17.88 from Bill 5, which deals with the Village Hotel. And in particular, I'd like to know a little bit more detail about what the Coastal Commission um, recommended, and I'd like a little understanding of what their perspective was. Uh, you sort of briefly touched on it by saying thank you to other blood. And um, if you could expand on that, uh, we've had extensive conversations with them, so I'm trying to understand where they're coming from. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so during their review, they actually thought that that would be a useful tool for us and it would be easier for us to analyze, to have a measurement from loss of 10 feet. Um, the language about keeping the view and being able to see the greenery above the hotel is, is directly from our um, general plan. And I think the, they weren't attached to the 10 foot. I think they thought they were helping us out. I, I don't expect to see that one come back as a deadline. Okay, yeah. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, any additional questions? Seeing none, we will bring it to public comment. And I'll turn it over to Larry. Thank you, Mary Peterson. Um, I do not see anybody uh, with a hand up on this item, and I do not see any emails. All right, then. We will bring it, uh, close public comment, and bring it back to council for discussion and a vote. And I see council member Bertrand has his hand up. All right. Thanks very much, Mayor. Um, last time this came before us to get our general idea of what we felt about things, and I had a comment about the hotel also. And I don't feel that what's being proposed captures what we heard many, many times at public meetings about what the residents of Capitol would like for the uh, hotel plans um, that may be brought to us at some point in time. So I still have reservations about the uh, language. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bertrand. Any additional comments? Oh, sorry, Councilor Bosworth. Yeah, I read this. The recommended action is just to accept the staff presentation. So I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, presentation of the recommended action. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we'll bring it to Councilor Bertrand. Vice Chair Brooks, did you have a comment or were you chiming in on the second? Okay, I think Council Member Bertone beat you to it, sorry. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Bertrand. I am approving this for discussion's sake. Wait, no, we're done with discussion. This is a, this is a, a vote. Okay. Please. Thank you, Mayor. I approve. Okay, great. Council Member Bosworth. Aye. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. It carries unanimously. Uh, and with that, we've come to the end of tonight's meeting. I think this may have been the shortest meeting of the year. Uh, so enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much, uh, Council Members. Thank you to staff. Uh, have a wonderful night. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Goodbye.